in here. Yeah. Wow. I have to say Hi. So. Hi, Seth. How you doing? I'm Mindy. I met you a long time yeah. ago with Aaron Huber. I remember. Sarah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Char. Okay. Have a seat, sir. What's going on? Um, well, we're here just to chit chat with you about your department and how things are going in your department. So just uh, maybe just start off with telling us about your working relationship with your coworkers in your department and how things are getting along. And well, uh, we have a lot of people who don't follow the rules and. Uh, having some problems with one specific employee and soon to be another, but I mean, I, we have employees who, is this in regards to Jerome, by any chance? Is that why we're here? Uh, there's been multiple, multiple allegations, yeah, just the complaints about, you know, um, maybe just about how you um, deliver yeah, Jerome yeah, your was supposed. Are with them and... Well, yeah, because uh, Jerome should have been fired months ago. Um, he puts bones in the food. He doesn't temp the food. He doesn't use the uh, supposed to use the leftover, like whatever bags of mac and cheese, mashed potatoes. He refuses to use those. So when the night cook comes in, they've been sitting there for now two days. Um, I think I was just talking to Kevin. We're going to be writing him up this week um he was he was jerome? jerome yes okay um he was supposed to be written up three separate times but he kept missing so many shifts uh dwight told me he was going to write him up for his no call no show about six months ago but then he missed so much oh, yeah, that's time too long ago. Yeah. uh he was supposed to be written up for putting bones in the food but then he had his his sick leave he was supposed to be written up kevin was going to write him up for missing so many shifts so by all intents and purposes, he should have been fired a long time ago. He refuses to do anything he's told. He took whole chickens and made a casserole, bones and all. I mean, the, there were bones sticking out of the casserole. And I left him a note and I said, if you do that again, and I, I cleared it with Dwight and I cleared it with, I haven't said anything to Jerome without clearing it with people above me. I talked to Dwight, I talked to Kevin before I left him the note. I said, if you do that, I had to throw it away. And if I didn't throw it away and someone choked on it, we both could have lost our jobs. The next shift he worked, he put bones in food. He made greens and he had full neck bones. Like I took a sample and there was a neck vertebrae in my mouth. This was the day after he was told, do not to put bones in the food again. You can lose your job for that. Like if somebody chokes because you put bones in the food, that's a fireable effect. He, not only refuses to listen, but he insists on doing whatever he's told not to do. Just to play a devil's advocate, because I don't know. Okay. What kind of training had he had? He was, th this is the problem. He was trained before Dwight and I got here. And the people who were trained before Dwight and I got here, it's anarchy. Apparently, from what I heard from my day shifts, uh, Janine let people do whatever they want. So, and we're also having problems with Kat, who I haven't even gotten to this stage with yet. I mean, she handles, she preps raw chicken with her bare hands regularly, doesn't put gloves on, handling raw. And one day after showing staff that she had a blister on her hand, that same day she prepped raw chicken. This is my staff. So let me ask you this. Yeah. <laughs> so does Dwight, as the deli manager, mm -hmm. Does he address these issues? Somewhat. Dwight doesn't like conflict. Dwight is a very nice guy. When I was promoted, when I sat down with Barb and Janine, uh, not Janine, uh, uh, Dana, for this position, they both told me we need someone to be the enforcer. We want a, an assistant manager who, who basically cracks down on the people who aren't following policy and gets people to follow policy. Where were you at before you came here? Uh, I was a clerk in Pleasant Hill. Just a deli clerk. At our Pleasant Hill location? Mm -hmm. Okay. How but long were you there, Seth? Four months. Four months. I was hired in June. I was promoted in, in yeah, 250. Uh, I was hired in June, and I was promoted in November two years ago. 
So was it the promotion that brought you over yes. here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You weren't looking to get out of there? No, no. I live Green. in Pleasant Hill. I'm okay. trying to get back. <laughs> so were you part-time in Pleasant Hill? And Most. I, she had me at about 39 hours and then came here and I've been working 50 hours ever since. <sighs> yeah, I've... I've well, the reason, I, the reason I bring it up, Seth, is that I'm just going to be, you know, up front and honest. In our contract, we do not have an assistant delegate manager classification in the contract. Yeah, I know. Okay? Uh -huh. So, you know, I understand, you know, that you're on last and final from last year. Uh huh. So, with that being said, I just don't want you to put yourself in a situation to where, you know, you go above and beyond and then you end up losing your job because that last and final because that last and final you do one more thing then you're done yeah so my thing is is that you know because we've had other people come up here and uh, address their concerns with how you interact with them how you talk to them could uh, I I mean this is America I should know who's making accusations what against what me is, can I get a name other than well, here's what other people say, Seth, is that as far as directing the workforce and as far as leaving notes and as far as telling people what they need to do and how they need to do it, when they need to do it, that's should literally my job. It, it it's should literally my job. That's Dwight's job. False. Well, it, Dwight that's doesn't Dwight's do his job. job. That's well, so it's what? my job. Let him, then let him worry about that. In the meantime, that's not your job. But that's literally why I was at my interview for this position. We want you to be the enforcer, and then I enforce, and but then you're I get. You're going to be the enforcer. You're going to get yourself in trouble. You're not. But I'm the not doing anything wrong. I'm literally doing my job, and everything that I've done, I clear with Jason. I mean, with with Kevin and with Dwight. So Dwight I'm not. Needs to handle it, and Kevin needs to handle it. But they, they, but I handle it. I mean, what, what else? I'm, that's you're 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 a full time deli clerk, just like they are. You're not. But I'm boss. not. I'm the assistant manager. We don't have an assistant I, manager. Well, that's you. The, the, no, it's you. It's this contract. Okay. We don't have an assistant deli manager in but this contract. You're, Bill, do we have an assistant okay, manager? Okay, I don't class understand class. what... It's because this is a union store, Yeah. and so it goes by the union contract. Okay. So what happens... But he can't write me up. Who? You. Why would I write you up? Well, that's why I don't understand why this... I'm not the one who can put you on the last and final. <laughs> okay. The reason I was put on last and final, and I wish Erin was here because she had regrets about doing that once she actually worked the job. Were you in? Was it you win that last meeting I had with Aaron? There was somebody else. I was with Aaron. That was you. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you remember she said that she had worked in the deli for three days in a deli, and then all of a sudden understood what I went through. See, the first meeting when I had that first and final, Cat yells at staff. She yells at everyone. Her first when she met Sean, our new district manager, she was rude to him the first day. July fourth, she um, I we had. We only put out a certain number of meals because they don't sell, and the rest are in the freezer. She took 14 meals, turkey meals, out of the freezer and insisted on putting them on the shelf. And I said, no, can't do that. And she said, yes, we're going to do it, and started yelling at me. And I raised my voice. I didn't swear. All I said was, in a very loud voice, which I won't do here, you are not my boss. Stop telling me what to do. But I said it above her. I said it loud enough to make her stop. Now that was just about a year ago. She has not raised her voice to me since. That's the entirety of why I have a, a first and final. That's what I did. Literally my job. I have an employee who won't follow the rules. She single dips chicken. I think you guys understand how important the new fried chicken thing is here. She doesn't do chicken correctly. She doesn't do, uh, uh, we have right now the, uh, 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 the things we make every Monday, the uh, pork tenderloins. She makes those incorrectly, so they come out terrible. She doesn't single, she single dips everything. She, she refuses to do anything. When she preps chicken, we're not supposed to do it in the sink. She not only does it in the sink, she uses our salad bowls that we mix like, like chicken salad in. She puts raw chicken into those. And then just runs them through the dishwasher. She's gonna kill somebody if somebody doesn't stop her. And between her and Jerome, it's a madness. I lay in bed at night trying to figure out how to get these people to behave. And they don't. So it's, I was told when I was promoted that I'm the enforcer. So, I mean, I don't see how I can get fired for doing what I'm supposed to do. Dwight is, he's a nice guy. He, hey, can you please not do that? And they don't care. They keep doing it. 
Jerome has been told he was going to be written up and he never got written up. So why would he listen? Yesterday, he intentionally, I left fish in the walk-in that was left over from the day before that needed to get used. You can't let just let sit, fish sit for days. He didn't touch it. He made frozen uh, 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 catfish nuggets. That was intentionally like, screw you, I'm not using your, your, your leftovers. I'm going to make what I want. So when a new hire comes in, what is the usual process of a new hire coming into the Delta department? How are they trained? We, I, well, it, I make sure that they're trained to not do all the things that you, can't. You're the one that trains them? It's me, and they'll work some days with Cheryl, and then who's out on sick leave right now. But it's me and Cheryl who train them in the kitchen, yeah, to make sure that, because this is, and the we fired, um, what was that kid with the long dreadlocks? I don't remember his name, but we fired him. He was the same thing. He was trained by whoever Jerome was trained by, and they do what they want. They don't clean up after themselves. I mean, the notes, I, I kept a copy of every note I've left for Jerome, and that's how I communicate with him. I'm not going to see him in the morning. Well, I think it's the delivery. I think it's the delivery. Well, I mean, we can read the note. How the, the notes are coming across. They're coming across pretty, you know negative and almost in a bullying type fashion is how they well i've been cleaning up his mess for a year and a half so i at the end of that note said i'm tired of cleaning up after you please do it but that's multiple notes i'm talking about not just one well do you have them i do not i have them you have copies i have copies of everything i've given because i was waiting for a day like this because people don't like being told what to do this is how bad jerome is that we're having this conversation and he's not here yeah this is a cook i'm he doesn't he cooks chicken for 14 minutes, does not temp any of it, puts it on the shelf. That can, that's putting our, our customers' lives in danger. Mm -hmm. He does, and I know he doesn't temp it because I set the uh, thermometer in a way that I would know if it had been moved, and I come in at the, after his shift and it's in the exact same spot. So he doesn't even use it. So if you'd like, I'll go get my list of notes and we can go well, over not them. not right now, but I, just, <laughs> I would actually like to see the copy of Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, I, I, like I said, this last one was the only one where I kind of, and it was like, he, he, because I told him twice, at least twice, please keep that freezer door closed because if you don't close it tight and it's open a little bit, the ice on the flats melts into a pool and then it freezes and we have a slick of ice. So I come in and there's a slick of ice on the floor. And the, freeze, the, the fridge is off temp. And the steamer is completely destroyed because he doesn't clean up after himself. I mean, we, we, he was off for three weeks, didn't have to clean the steamer. He was back one day, it was destroyed. And this is, and he doesn't understand that we've been cleaning up after him for a year, probably since before I got there, excuse me. So it was frustration of, dude, start, you know, how do you not see that you're making a mess? He, we're supposed to cook the rotisserie chickens in the rotisserie machine. He doesn't like that. So he cooks it in the, in the steamer, but he puts so many on a rack that just by moving them, all the chicken juice leaks off the side. And he just leaves it for me to clean up. I'm working 50 to 55 hours a week. Let, let me ask you about that. <laughs> yeah. Actually. Yeah. What, how, how come you're the only individual on the team working all this over? Yeah, well, I, that. I'm the only one who wants to, who, who's willing to do it. I mean, apparently going back to Janine and probably before her, the manager usually works 60 hours a week at this store because there's so much to do. But again, you're not the manager. But he does work. not want to work. He hits 46 hours and he's like, I'm working for free. That's, and, and he, he was hired. That's the problem. I'm off, I've offered them and Kevin has, has conveyed this. So you, you're pulling in. Five, I had over 500 days. hours of overtime last year. I'm almost at 200 hours of overtime this year. And I told them, I told them, you want to make that go away, make me salary. Because I have to do this stuff. Like, it's stuff that needs to get done. I'm not, I haven't taken a break. I mean, it sounds like you take pride, you take it upon yourself because you feel like there is a lack of leadership back with that deli, right? I don't want to set, use those words because I like Dwight. And he's good at what, we, we work good as a team. He doesn't want to, I mean, if he works those extra 15 hours a week, he doesn't get any extra money. So he feels like it's slavery, basically. I mean, he's working for free. I get, and, 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 but I don't see it that way. I mean, I see, it's just a different philosophy. I see salary as we're paying you a set thing, do the job. You don't count the hours. 
You don't even think about the average, which is why I keep asking them, make me salary, you won't have to pay me overtime. Then I can, then I can do the job and not, because I, every night that I work over, I get, I worry. I'm like, I, in my head, spend the entire shift justifying everything I'm doing. Like, if they come to me tomorrow and say, why were you late? I have to tell them why. And it's been going on for a year and a half. Have you like, had conversations every, with Kevin about yes, he's, he's, what is he saying? He's about? trying to get them to make me salary because it would solve the problem. And I talked to Sean about it. Sean laughed in my face. I'm like, no, we can't make your salary. I'm like, well, then we're going to have another 500 hours of overtime this year because... All this stuff needs, no, chicken needs to get prepped. We could stop prepping chicken, I guess. I mean. Well, the other people in your shit, or your department, are being told they can't work overtime. Well, we're what all told that. Who improves your overtime? Kevin. I mean, Kevin knows, Kevin knows that I'm doing, that this is what I do. And it's been every week since November 2017. I have not had a single 40-hour week, ever. So it's been for a while. It's a long time. Every, every, since I started. And it. And a lot of it's trays. Like if I, if we were told now, we used to be able to say we need 24 hour notice for a tray. Now we have to take a tray no matter what. So if it's seven o'clock at night, someone calls in and they want a, two trays for the morning, either we're gonna tell them no, which we can't do, or I'm gonna stay and make it. Last week's overtime, or not last week, the last pay periods overtime, that was mostly trays. I mean, I had, Kevin came to me and he said, you've got to cut back on this overtime. Mm -hmm. He said that to me last Sunday when he saw the report. And I said, trays, like we have to make the trays. If they come in at night and they're doing the morning, I can't, our morning shift can't do it. Our morning shift can't be counted on to do it and you can't risk. Well, that probably flows into overtime, which they can't have. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's our morning shift is, they're, well, they, they, they're not gonna do that. I mean, it's, I do it and I've been doing it and I mean, I had a 72-hour week once, <laughs> six 12-hour days in one week. Because the other thing is, we met so many people miss shifts. I mean, Jerome, when he was out, someone had to fill up their shifts. Cheryl's out right now. Someone has to fill in her shifts. I haven't worked a non-cook shift in like two and a half months. And as the assistant manager, like on Wednesday, I'm going to come in Wednesday at two. I'm going to have to work the cooking shift. But then I have to put away the whole order, which is going to be sitting in, a, in, in the produce back room. Then I'm going to have to hang price changes. I'm going to have to prep chicken. And it's going to be one in the morning. That's Wednesdays. That's my Wednesdays with Cheryl out. When Cheryl's here, she's the cook, and I could have done all that stuff during the shift. But as the cook, you can't, pull a, you can't put a, the order away and be the cook. It's just not literally impossible. So, I mean, I, I get that this isn't... This is why I keep offering to mm -hmm. salary. I mean, it seems like it would solve the problem. Well, my bottom line or biggest concern here is just the, the people relations. Well, I'd like to know who else other than Jerome has it's, been. You know, it, it, that's it, besides the point. It, it isn't, it though. Is, no, it's, people should be able to feel like they can confidentially have a discussion and not be right out, which I'm going to put in the caveat right here and now, okay? Okay. We don't. Do you tolerance for any kind of retaliation? No, there's no retaliation. I just like to I'm know who saying, thinks I'm doing saying. other than Jerome, who has a problem. So, I think the general consensus with your team mm -hmm. is that they feel like they are bullied, they're not talked to in a respectful manner, some of the notes that are being left. That's my I'll concern. give you all the notes. <laughs> I would love to see it. Yes. I would love to see it because I, I get that there's two sides. Yes. I get that there's two sides. So, but that is my biggest thing here is what is going on that people are feeling like it is a um, toxic area, you know, and that well, they're not comfortable coming into work. Well, if we need to fix that. Well, the, the two people that I've talked about, I mean, they, they're putting our customers in danger every single day and their absolute well, refusal. There probably needs to be some coaching or some re-coaching. They don't listen. They don't care. Cat's been told you don't you make chicken by dipping it in the flour, dipping it in the water, dipping it in the flour, and then the fryer. She goes okay, and then as soon as we walk away, she just dips it in the water, the flour, and the fryer. So what do you do for accountability? I wish I knew. I really okay. do, because if we could write these people up, they would do their job, and we wouldn't be sitting here. This is my problem: is no one gets written up in this department. I was the last person to write anyone up, and that was over a year ago. And that's why I talked to Kevin. I mean, I just talked to Kevin about writing up Jerome because this has gotten out of hand. I mean, he's now. So just out of curiosity, Chad, um, so I know you can't write up Union. How would they 
So would what be. would happen is that what? you would document it, and you would get Kevin or Jason involved. Yeah, yeah. Would be the ones that would write the person up. Okay. Well, that's that so, was the plan. Is me and right. Kevin are going to sit down with Jerome right. on Friday and and give him the write up. Right. But he needs. I mean, he, at the end of the day, members don't write other members up. But I've written them up before, and I didn't realize that you're was not a, supposed to. Okay. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to document, and then get the managers involved, like Kevin. Or well, Jason. we we both signed it. I'm not even allowed to sign it as one of the because oh, as a witness or whatever. Yeah, but as long as Kevin signs it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Kevin, so here's the manager. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, then, oh, yeah. I, right. I, it's always two people. I mean, everyone I've written right. up was with a, a store manager. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's the problem. Is is I backed again since that my write my write up, I backed off. And because I backed off, no one gets written up. And because no one gets written up, we have the frustration of me leaving a note saying, please stop doing this. And I leave notes for Kat too, and I know sometimes they upset her, but I mean, she won't do her job. To have an have a open sore on her hand and to be raw handing chicken. You guys are always supposed to have on gloves. Yeah, like yes, there. and we tell her and she doesn't care. That's the thing, she doesn't care. She does what she wants. We call her Cat Cosentino because she acts like she owns a place. She refuses to do anything that we say. And Dwight caught her with gloves. Please, you okay? She, when Dwight caught her bare-handing the chicken, he told her to put gloves on. She goes, well, I'm almost done. And she finished bare-handed. In my life, I can't imagine a manager saying, do something, and me going, nah. Who does it? Like, how do you? And that's my whole, half of my staff. They just do what they want, and when we tell them, they just continue to do what they want. And if it was a no big deal thing, then it'd be no big deal. But they're putting, I mean, if someone had choked on, on Jerome's bones, we'd be, sitting here in a, we'd be sitting in a courtroom having this discussion. And I'd be telling the jury, you know, I keep trying to get people to do their job, but no one wants to. And then the Cosentinos would look bad. Like, I, I mean, that's the way I see it is they... They're under, I mean, cat undercooks food. They don't temp things. And they don't, so how do you know it's done? Like right now, I, I usually cook the uh, turkey, the, the big turkey breasts, because cat insists, used to insist on, you got to cook it covered and then uncover it for the last like 25 minutes or brown. She does it backwards. She starts it covered and then uncovers it. And when it looks done, she pulls it out. So twice on the shelf, we had a turkey breast that was completely raw in the middle. So we took that away from her. But I've been so busy, I haven't made it. So she made turkey breast, and it's in the cooler right now, and I know when I open it up, it's a 50-50 chance it's going to be done, or it's going to be raw in the middle. Because she doesn't temp it. How do you know it's done? By looking at it. You don't. But they do. They, her and Jerome, they both think they know everything. And it drives me crazy, because we can kill somebody for this. Like, I don't know... So I don't, this is my frustration, and I understand they may think of it as bullying, but I'm literally just trying to get them to follow procedure. Period. That's it. The entire intent of everything I've done with them, please just follow the rules. And they're like, oh my God, I'm calling the union. Like, what am I supposed to do? <sighs> well, I think we need to have a conversation. I mean, not me, but maybe the company having a conversation with uh, yeah, clearly. the wife. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean... And, I mean, you know what? I mean, hey, I'm not trying to throw him in the bus. Or anything and I'm not either. Issue. That's why and I didn't... At the end of the day, I mean, he is the deli man. And that's why I've he been... He needs to be the one enforcing this stuff. He needs to be the one to make sure that people are taking the pen. You know, you know you're taking too much and put it on your shoulders that's when, you're, you know, you, you shouldn't have to. That's the deli manager's job. Well, we've always... You know, we've, but that's... But, uh, yeah, 100%. I mean... I mean, because it, it definitely sounds you're very passionate. You you care about what's right, what's wrong back there. And but and it's also that's what I was hired. I mean, Barb said we want someone to be the enforcer, so the manager doesn't have to do it. And then you guys are telling me the manager is supposed to do it. But it would work this way if. I mean, I think honestly, the problem is is that I haven't. It, 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 I'm using notes instead of write ups. Like Cat would would be using gloves every day if she had been written up for it twice. But if I just leave her a note, there, she doesn't there care. There needs to be some <laughs> accountability yeah. there, and that, I agree that that's on Dwight. And I think that that's the path this needs to go, is Dwight needs to be handling his department. Unfortunately, he came from a store that had that position to one that does not. And so technically, this needs to be Dwight making these calls. Yeah. And, and that's where we're going to have to partner with him to help him out, because that should be coming from him, not you. Bottom line. 
you, okay. do you think you can handle that? Do you, you think you can? Yeah, I mean that. With that? The, I mean, I just that's part of the frustration, and and again, don't want to throw him under the bus, but that's the frustration is telling him, and, and telling Jason and and Kevin too. Like, I mean, Jason, I handed Jason the bones that I got in my mouth from tasting Jerome's food, handed it to him. He has them somewhere and never wrote them up. Like, when that does, it's not just Dwight. Like, Jason, because Kevin defers to Jason. Jason's, Kevin's enforcer. Jason doesn't do it. So, like, I've been getting, trying to get him well, to cat to do cat. I'm trying to play devil's advocate. I know there's some um, murky waters between the two of you. And so. You know what the murky waters I, are? No, I, don't, I really don't want to do it. No, it, it, well, it's important, though. I don't think that that's part of today's conversation, <laughs> okay? okay? Okay. I, I, I just don't want to go Because it's that. the same thing. <laughs> but I think that his hands are tied a little bit. But I will be more but again, than happy but... to work with you if you will let me know what's going on and I can partner with Kevin to help out Dwight yeah. to follow up on these things, okay? So you're not getting caught in the middle and then it just frustrates your team even more because... I mean, it would make it a lot easier if I could write these notes to Dwight and he would take care of it. Mm-hmm. I know that's not going to happen. So I write the notes to the people. So yeah, I mean, I, I, and not, it's just not his personality. I mean, it's just, he's just a nice guy. He doesn't want to discipline people. And I just want everyone to do their job. And that's you where- You should be nice and, and, and also, you can also make sure that everybody's yeah. being held accountable too. Yeah, well that's- I mean, you yeah. gotta roll with an iron fist just to make sure everybody's being held accountable. True. You can be nice mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah, and I was just telling Kevin, I had an employee about a year ago was showing up late all the time. And I wrote up a write-up sheet went to him, had him sign it, and then tore it up and threw it in the trash and said, just don't do it again. And he started showing up on time. I mean, that worked better than, hand, than doing a full write-up in that situation. And I knew it. I knew he didn't need to be written up. He just needed to know that we're serious. Because he, yeah, but some people, that's going to go the opposite direction. Well, I, I mean, it just... Yeah. It, really? You're, oh, yeah. I mean... Yeah. It kind of lets them know that, hey, I'm, I'm, I got your back. I'm not going to turn this in. Just please don't do it again. I mean, he... Oh, no, he took it as me. I, I know. Yeah. In this situation, I'm glad it worked. Yeah. Really good, but I'm I didn't even, I didn't even I think it. I don't know that that's probably a good yeah. tool. Well, can, then people yeah. need to be written up. I mean, absolutely. that's... <laughs> absolutely, and Dwight needs to be doing that. Okay. Yep. Do you want me to send him up? Is he here today? Yeah, I don't, uh, he should still be here. Yeah, absolutely. If He, he may be gone, but let me, if he's if here. he is, and here's my card, that's okay. So okay. If I can... Please let me know, okay? Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Sir.